Ventilation is the process of moving air into and out of the lungs, and there are two parts to ventilation. The first part of ventilation is inspiration, or breathing in. The second part of ventilation is expiration, or breathing out. In ventilation, there are two principles that govern airflow. The first principle is that a change in volume results in a change in pressure. The relationship between volume and pressure in ventilation is volume is inversely proportional to pressure. The second principle that governs airflow is that air flows from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. When discussing ventilation, there are two types of air pressure. The first type of air pressure is atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is the air pressure outside the lungs in the body. Atmospheric pressure has a value of 760 millimeters of mercury. The second type of air pressure is alveolar pressure. Alveolar pressure is the pressure inside the alveoli within the lungs. Alveolar pressure will fluctuate above or below 760 millimeters of mercury depending on the size and volume of the lungs. There are three muscles of ventilation that we will discuss. The first muscle found between the ribs are called the external intercostal muscles. When the external intercostal muscles contract, they pull the rib cage up and out. The next set of muscles are also found between the ribs, and they are called the internal intercostal muscles. When the internal intercostal muscles contract, they pull the rib cage down and in. The last muscle is a dome-shaped muscle that sits between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavity. The name of this muscle is the diaphragm. When the diaphragm contracts, it moves from being a convex-shaped muscle to a flat muscle. Inspiration is the process of breathing in. In order to breathe in, the body must increase the volume of the lungs and decrease the pressure below 760 millimeters of mercury. To increase the volume of the lungs, the external intercostal muscles contract, pulling the rib cage up and out. Also, the diaphragm contracts, pulling the inferior part of the lungs down. As mentioned to you before in a previous lecture, surface tension plays a major role in ventilation. As the thoracic cavity moves, it pulls on the parietal pleura, which is attached to the visceral pleura through surface tension. The visceral pleura then pulls on the lungs, increasing the size of the lungs, therefore increasing the volume of the lungs. Increasing the volume of the lungs decreases the alveolar pressure to roughly around 759 millimeters of mercury. Because atmospheric pressure is greater than alveolar pressure, air moves into the lungs because air flows from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Inspiration is what we call an active process because the muscles that increase the size of the lungs require energy. Expiration is the process of breathing out. In order to breathe out, you must decrease the volume of the lungs, which increases the pressure within the lungs, above 760 millimeters of mercury. In order to decrease the volume of the lungs, the external intercostal muscles relax and gravity pulls the rib cage down and in. Also, the diaphragm relaxes, allowing the lungs to return back to their original shape. Decreasing the volume of the lungs increases the alveolar pressure to about 761 millimeters of mercury. Since alveolar pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure, air moves out of the lungs. Expiration is what we call a passive process because it requires the relaxation of the external intercostal muscles, the diaphragm, and gravity to reduce the size of the chest cavity and the lungs. Forced expiration is actually not a part of ventilation. It's a process that forcefully moves air out of the lungs. During forced expiration, 
the internal intercostal muscles contract, further decreasing the volume of the lungs, further increasing the alveolar pressure, forcing more air out of the lungs. A good example of forced expiration is pictured, blowing out candles or blowing up a balloon. Spirometry is the process of measuring volumes of air moving into and out of the lungs. The machine used to measure lung volumes is called a spirometer, and the graph of lung volumes created by a spirometer is called a spirogram. The volume of air during normal quiet breathing is called tidal volume. The maximum amount of air that can forcibly be inhaled is called the inspiratory reserve volume. And the maximum amount of air that can be exhaled is called the expiratory reserve volume. Tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume equals vital capacity. The volume of air that remains in the lungs after forced maximum expiration is called residual volume. And finally, the total amount of air that the lungs can hold is called total lung capacity. To recap lung volumes, tidal volume is the volume of air during relaxed, quiet breathing. The inspiratory reserve volume is the maximum volume of air that can be inhaled after a normal breath. The expiratory reserve volume is the maximum volume of air that can be exhaled after a normal breath. Residual volume is the volume of air remaining in the lungs after forced maximum expiration. Vital capacity equals tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume. And finally, total lung capacity equals vital capacity plus residual volume.